0208 The rest of Australia, 008 022 Our fax number, as you know, is 02906 8800. With me in the studio, the Prime Minister of Australia, Paul Keating. Good morning and welcome. Good morning, John. A bit of fog in Canberra, wasn't it? Yes, we darted through it. Yeah. As long as it was safe. Oh, yes. Uh, it's easy to get off the ground and get back down. That's right. Wintry morning's not much fun in Canberra. Wintry morning, right around Australia. There's a lot of people feeling a little chilled by the Mabo decision, and I think somehow a lot of people getting it out of proportion. Do you think that's right? Oh, yes, I think so. I, I think, the, I mean, this is a, a reasonably complex uh, issue and a complex legal judgment, um, but something the High Court took the better part of a decade in deciding, and, and uh, it is a, a milestone decision and one which I think gives Australia uh, a tremendous opportunity to um, get its relationship uh, with the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people, right. Can you understand the, the white population of Australia, and there are an awful lot of them, finding it difficult to come to terms with the fact that uh, the Aboriginal people will be compensated in their minds, now whether this is fact or not, time will tell, and it might take a long time, that the Aboriginal people will be compensated, that they will receive more money, stories being told that 1.5% of the population has 15% of the land mass of Australia. I don't think the people who make those statements bothered to have a look at the quality of the land mass that they have. But these uh, are alarmist statements that are being made and cause concern amongst the public. Do you understand the concern? Oh yes, I could see people <clears throat> thinking that in some way Aboriginal people are being treated uh, in a preferential way, but that's, that's not true. Uh, in, in many countries uh, these issues have been, judgments have been made by governments and by Supreme Courts. And of course just across the way, in the Tas across the Tasman, New Zealand, there was a treaty of settlement, the Treaty of Waitangi. Which is still in place. Which is still in place. Now, there was no treaty in Australia. Aboriginal Australians were dispossessed of the land. And what this decision says, <clears throat> it's fairly simple really, it says that where continuing association with the land can be established, a native title exists. May exist. Yeah, but there's the rub, continuing association. Now, if you could slip that uh, set of headphones on there in order that you can listen to the people who are going to call in that want to talk to you, be an incorrect point of view on the subject of Mabo. Over the uh, week and a bit that I've been back, I've done my best to explain it as I see it in, uh, in light of the court ruling as clearly and uh, without hysteria. But still, some hysteria exists and a lot of Australians would like to talk to the Prime Minister. Here's your opportunity. Hello. Hello. You there, John? Yep. Right. OK, now you go right ahead. The Prime Minister is here listening to you. Now, I'm, I don't know whether I'm limited to a question or not, uh, Mr Keating, but uh, I find this, that your term of Mabo, you, you're creating um, concerns by using an interpretation of a judgment. So, right, having said that, I'll say this to you. The claims that are being made at the present moment, I'm not going to mention Mabo, is being ridiculed by the Aboriginal Affairs Minister. As you have not made a public comment on such claims, do you agree with Mr Tickner? Oh, yes, I've made public comments about them. I said that well, they... you know, you have... <clears throat> these, claims, these claims have got nothing to do with Marbo. No. These are some of these silly claims in New South Wales claiming... I've already agreed with you. I've already agreed with you that, in my opinion, they've got nothing to do with Marbo. Yeah. I'm talking there... Do you agree that it is a total waste of public funds making these futile claims? Oh, absolutely. But it's not public funds that are being wasted because I don't think that uh, I don't think the claims will stand at all. Well, who who prepares the the, uh, the claims? Well, in some cases, isn't, isn't the isn't the the ALS and Mr. Coe and, and a few solicitors and a few barristers and all this getting involved in this? That may be true, but right the now, fact where's that, that money coming from? Well, let's uh, understand this point: the claims haven't got a snowball's chance in hell of succeeding. They've right. got nothing to do with Marbo, not nothing whatsoever. Never mind about Marbo. <laughs> Why are you allowing the total waste of taxpayers' funds? on this, uh, these futile claims. Well, you could, say, you, you, you could say the same thing for legal aid for, 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 for non-Aboriginal Australians. Why should we allow legal aid for non-Aboriginal Australians for what you may call futile claims? That crybaby act's gone down the drain a long time ago. No, it's not. It's it just has. there. It's there now. You are making, you are making the... the well, what's your point? What's your point? The, the point is this, that you are, as boss of this, this uh, country, you are allowing a total waste of funds under the guise of Mabo. 
No, it's got nothing to do. Look, look. You, you keep... It's got nothing to do with Mabo. Not nothing whatsoever. Okay, good. Now, do you want another question? Okay, no, no, well, no, you, are, you asked me about this. I don't. I don't want to. I'm not here basically to soak up all your prejudices. I'm here to answer a few questions about Mabo. I'm not... Okay, but let's let's just clarify this. The question, the point that you've made to the Prime Minister is, you believe that he is allowing public funds to be wasted in the form of claims through the Aboriginal legal services that, uh, as he said, don't have a snowflake's chance in hell That's of right. succeeding. Uh, his re retort to that, which wasn't a bad one, was uh, if the white people of Australia are permitted to have. Legal Legal aid, which they are, I, is it not fair and reasonable that uh, that the Aboriginal people should also have legal aid? We're not allowed to have legal aid for that. Um, well, aren't we? I don't know. I don't no, but you, you, you can have you can have legal aid okay. for your particular pet obsession if you wish, and it may have justice and it may not. Just as just as Aboriginal claims may have justice and may I not. Got the, I haven't got them. I can't afford to even walk in the solicitor's office. Well, you may qualify for legal aid if you had a matter of substance. That's the point. Don't, don't try and con this this whole business of of uh, putting it on to what the whites can get. The whites have been held back. I'm not, I'm not arguing about on racial side of this business. I'm arguing on the hysteria that you and your government and the Aboriginal affairs have caused... No, hang on. Just, to, just, uh, just to understand this. Look, uh, look, just understand this point. This is a decision of the High Court of Australia, the most supreme of our national... our, our most supreme national court. This is not a matter which has been initiated by the government at all. It's something that the government has to respond to, to put an administrative framework and a framework in law into place so as to dis hear and dispense native title. I've heard, I've heard you make these claims before, but I point out that this judgment is regarding the Murray Island people and the state of Queensland. It did not say, well, listen now, we're going to make this all applicable to the mainland. Oh, I think, well, I think you fail, you fail to understand what the decision means. A uh, apart from that, it would have set a precedent. But, yeah. but, you have, but uh, you, you, you're not under, understanding the, the, what the decision means. But Mr Keating is trying to have a settlement out of court, put it that way. No, we're not. We're not trying to do anything of the kind. Well, what are you talking about, Commonwealth? Well, what's your, what's your, what's your beef? I mean, don't, uh, I mean, don't you think that Aboriginal Australians are entitled to any land? Of course, they should be treated the same as every other. Well, OK. Well, there, what's your problem? I have to buy my land. Why can't they buy theirs? But forget about that racial <laughs> business. Well, ha well, ha hang on. Let's, let's, get, let's get an answer to that question. You had to buy your land. Why can't they buy theirs? What's the Prime Minister got to say to that? Well, if, 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 we, if there'd have been a treaty here in 1788... There couldn't be a treaty, Mr. Uh, there, then, uh, then, then the thing is, uh, may be... May, may be that, that the Crown might have bought its land. There couldn't be a treaty, Mr. Keady. You know that because there was too many tribes and clans and whatever. Oh, I, well, I, I, thank you for your anthropological advice. Well, that's in history. I'm not only talking from history. Right, now... I think you're talking prejudice mostly, aren't you? If you're talking a little bit... That's of what you're really talking. You don't want to see... You don't want to see Aboriginal Australians have any right to the land. Well, and, can I, and it grates on you that they, that, they, that they have a decision here, which is a decision in justice, which you then want to focus on crazy land claims that have nothing to do with it to try and diminish its standing. That's what you're about. Well, I'm not making the claims the Aboriginals are. But listen... Yeah. Anyway, look, I think, I think you've had a fair enough go. I understand your point, but let me just finalise this. The claims over New South Wales have got nothing to do with Marbo, nothing whatsoever. But, you, but the point is that it's a point of aggravation to the, to the average Australian to see monies, which they believe to be their monies, that are provided to the Aboriginal uh, legal services, being spent on claims that are futile and uh, alarmist. Well, some may be, but again, I don't... I well, it's don't, pretty alarmist to hear that yes. they want two-thirds of New South Wales. Well, I know, but I don't, I don't think that uh, uh, the serious people who basically uh, are involved in this issue um, on the Aboriginal side of things are, going, are supporting these things, and they've said so. Yep. And, the, and therefore, that'll mean, in the end, there will not be big, big cases and, and long expenses. Yeah, but I'm simply, I'm simply asking you, do you understand that if, if the people aren't equipped with the knowledge, and the people are not equipped, you can hear by the, the yeah. first call, they're not equipped yeah. with the knowledge, that if they don't have the understanding, that they get a panic? Well, John, it's probably worth telling people that, just to make this point, that native title is a, a title subordinate to the Crown. That is, where freehold or leasehold has been dispensed in the past the high court has held that the native title has been extinguished gone so if you take sydney the suburbs of sydney the settled areas the freehold areas of rural new south wales queensland western australia etc 
the native title is extinguished. But can it ever be restored? No, it can't be restored where it's extinguished. You see, that's the question being asked by many. It might have been extinguished by freehold title. Can it ever be restored? The answer is no. No. What about leasehold land? No. Uh, no. Leasehold too, except, except for titles from 1975 onwards, which have been invalidly issued, some invalidly issued. OK. Now, we must take another call because that was the, the idea to let the people of Australia talk to you directly so that they would have a better understanding of the problem. Hello? Good morning. OK. The Prime Minister is here. Yes, hey. good morning. Uh, my question to the Prime Minister, I'd like to uh, actually ask him quite a few questions on Mabo, but just, just a very broad question is, uh, Mr Keating, is why does your government see the Aboriginal people as a much more equal uh, people than the, white, the average white Australian? We don't. We see them as equal. Well, you might say that, but all the indications are that you don't. But, you, but I think that in what's implied in your question is you don't. You think oh, that non-Aboriginal Australians, ought to ha ought, there ought to be discrimination in their favour no. against blacks. Not, 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 not what's, whatsoever. I, I don't see that at all. But my, my, myself and every person I talk to, and, I, and I'm not racist, but every person I talk to... Well, that's what, that's what they all say, don't they? I mean, they, they put these questions. They always say, I'm not racist, but, you know, I don't believe that that uh, Aboriginal Australians ought to have a basis in equality with, uh, with uh, non-Aboriginal Australians. Well, of course, that's part of the problem. Aren't they more equal than us at the moment with the prefer preferences they get? More equal? They were, they were... I mean, it's not for me to be giving you a history lesson. They were largely dispossessed of the, of the land and they held. I think there's a question over that. Well, a lot of people will tell you that you're telling us one thing. And well, if you're, the if you're sitting on the title of any block of land in New South Wales, you can bet an Aboriginal person at some stage was dispossessed of it. Well, but you, you're you, you know that for sure, do you? That's well, of course we know it for sure. Yeah. OK, well, look, going, going on to, to your last caller there, I think he had some pertinent things to say that you couldn't answer either. Yeah, I know, but you, to, you hold his view, don't I you? Do. Hey? Of course I do. Oh, no, yeah, of course you do. But, well, what, that's but what, part of the what is that? Let's let's clarify the view. What 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 is the view? My question in general. I mean, is is uh, w with regard to just the whole Aboriginal question is why as white Australian? Why does the average white Australian feel that he's prejudiced against? Why? Because of the things that your government does. Like what? Well, the preferential treatment. But but but, but, are you, but, look, like you, but you're challenging the High Court decision, are you? You're saying the High Court's got this all wrong. No, I'm not saying that at all. I don't. I, I wouldn't know who who was on the High Court. No, well, 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 and why don't you sign off if you don't know anything about it and you're not interested? Goodbye. Yeah, well, that's that's your. No, I mean you can't you can't challenge these things and not and then say I don't know about them. Uh, well, he's gone. Hello. Yeah. Yes, um, I'd just like to say I'm of oh, white descent. I think I've been lucky to be born here. We've got um, good education and everything. The history of our country can't be changed. And, you know, like, we've got good opportunities for education and everything, as have those of black descent. And wouldn't it be good, you know, when we're all older, if we could all look around and say that we got what we've got through hard work, not through court cases? Yeah, well, the point you're making there is what? You don't believe the Aboriginal people will get what they've got through hard work? No, it's not that at all. It's just that... Isn't it time that we just looked forward rather than the Aboriginals going for this? Well, can I just say, the thing, the thing to look forward to is a country which is, which is in its soul at peace with itself, that's not prospering at and including the dispossession of another people. And that's the point of the High Court decision. That's the point of the reference I just read about... Uh, the dispossession and injustice. I mean, we are a unique country now. This is a multicultural country. It's changed enormously since the war. It has tremendous opportunities. It's an island continent. We're the only nation in the world that has a continent to itself. We don't share a border with anybody. We ha we are we're located in the fastest growing part of the world. We ha we have the natural protection of the sea. Uh, there's great opportunities here, but to go to get to go forward together as a people, means we have to go forward together on terms on which we all agree. And to have the original inhabitants not agreeing, saying that they were dispossessed and largely disadvantaged, means we will never do that completely. Now, that's why the Mabo decision is an opportunity. It's an opportunity to deal very late in the peace, but better late than never, with the injustice of Aboriginal dispossession. And that's what it's about. But it doesn't threaten... 
So the point about it is, it doesn't threaten anyone else's property in the in these areas of Australia we're talking about, the no, settled areas. Like but what it does, it brings up in a, on a basis of equality the opportunity of the in, the original inhabitants to have a piece of the country themselves. If we want to progress as a country truly at peace with itself inside, that is, where the opportunities available to Australians are equal opportunities, Marbo, the Marbo judgment does give Australia a chance to even up, to give Australian, to give Aboriginal people uh, some of the rights that non-Aboriginal Australians have had. So it's not a case of discrimination in favour of Aboriginal people, it's a case of bringing them up to rights which Australians, non-Aboriginal Australians have enjoyed. Now, that coupled with the fact that we have as ourselves changed as a community uh, through the migration program, uh, through the sophistication of our society, uh, it lets us get on with it and not have this question about dispossession uh, and, uh, if you like, criticism by other countries of the way we manage our domestic indigenous affairs, affairs with our indigenous people, it puts that aside. And I think this is, this is why the Mabo decision is, is a great opportunity, if handled properly. But again, I repeat, left to the decision itself, uh, it will only affect a minority of Aboriginal people. It will only beneficially affect a minority of Aboriginal people. And that's why we have to think about other social justice programs so that land may be provided in some way to those who are formally dispossessed of the land and can't make a Marbo claim. Okay. Prime Minister, thank you for your time. Thank you, John.